everyone, it's Chris from Rat Race Rebellion. I want to talk to you today about transferable skills. That is skills that you learn in one type of a job that you can transfer into another job. And it's not always easy for people who don't really understand what your job fully entails to understand how, if you're doing A, how does that make you qualified to do B? So we're going to talk today specifically about people whose experience lies mostly in serving or wait staff positions. The reason I wanted to do this field first is because since starting this business in 1999, Mike and I have worked with tens of thousands of job seekers. And our focus has always been on helping people find remote work, legitimate remote work. And over the course of those years, we've communicated with people by email, but we've also done a lot of on-site trainings at military installations for the Department of State, with faith-based organizations and community colleges. So we've met with a lot of different types of job seekers. And one of the questions that comes up consistently and still comes up today is, how can I qualify for a remote job? Or more importantly, how can I convince um, decision makers that I'm qualified for a remote job doing this when I have only been working in the food service industry? And I go nuts when I hear people say only anytime they're talking about themselves. Maybe you've seen another video that I did here on YouTube about how I want people to stop using the words just and only as they talk about themselves and their accomplishments and their work experience because it is a self-defeating way to look at yourself. So anyway, before I dive into the identifying your transferable skills and how to weave them into a cover letter and resume that's going to showcase the skills that you know you have in a way that other people will also recognize them. I want to encourage you, if you like this video, to give a thumbs up. That helps us out on the YouTube algorithms. And also, if you haven't already done so, take a moment to subscribe to this YouTube channel. When you do, be sure to click on the little bell icon, and that way you'll receive notifications every time we upload new content. I'm going to take you over to the Rat Race Rebellion site for a post that is actually going up tomorrow. Today is March 24th, so it'll be on the site for March 25th. Um, and it will be a good way for you to get these resources in a way that after you've watched the video, you can go through and see the samples online. So let's pop over to ratracerebellion.com and I'll give you a preview of what's going to be in that post. So um, after the introduction, we talk a little bit about identifying your transferable skills. And as we say, those are skills that you can take from one job to another. And you're always going to want to focus on the transferable skills that are relevant to the position that you're applying for. All right. So looking at the waitstaff industry, there are so many skills that people use every day in communicating with the public. Um, that transition especially well into customer service roles, but not only into customer service roles. And I've broken some of them down here, but as I'm going through these, if I miss anything, if I've missed some transferable skills that you know you have, that you developed as a result of being in the food service industry or hospitality industry, then drop them into the comments section below because I want to make sure that people watching this video and reading the post have those aha moments where they say, yes, I can do that. That's right. I do do this. Um, so let's take a look at the ones that I tracked down and then again, drop yours that are in addition to this in the comment section below. So communication skills. 
you're talking with people all day long. And we're talking about all different kinds of characters, all different kinds of personalities. So in addition to talking to your customers, you're talking to management, you're talking to your colleagues, and your ability to communicate is cr crucial to succeeding in this role. In your role as a server, you're probably communicating with just as many, if not more people, different kinds of personalities on a daily basis than a lot of people do in other roles. Critically important. Teamwork, again, whether you're working in a large restaurant or you're working in an events organization, whatever it is, it only functions well if you're working effectively as part of a team, if there's collaboration, if you're making things work, you're working, you're making it work as part of a team with the understanding, of course, that some team players are better than others. Um, so if you feel that you're a great team member, then go ahead and include teamwork customer service. And again, it sort of falls into that same dealing with people all day long, every day. And so many industries, almost every industry requires some degree of customer service interactions. Multitasking. If you've worked in a restaurant, and I have, you know that you are juggling so many balls on every shift. You're taking orders from multiple people. You've got managers telling that you need, they need you to do things when you're busy doing other things and you're prioritizing and you're trying to pay attention to this person over here who's you hooing you while you're trying to get an order for this person. And you're trying to commit things to memory and making sure that everything runs seamlessly. So while you may be going a little crazy in your head, everybody around you feels like, ah, you're handling this just great. So and I know from having worked in, the, in a restaurant in the past, the ability to make every individual feel as though they are the most important person in the room is a really difficult thing to do. And you have to be a ferocious multitasker to be able to pull that off. Time management sort of falls into that same category. And I know sometimes in this industry, it can be difficult because there's only so much you can do to manage the time because if the kitchen is running behind or if they have put you onto too many sections, too many tables with too many customers or a big party comes in, it becomes a lot more difficult. But if you're pulling it off like a trooper, then you've got good time management skills. Resilience. We've all had, anybody who's worked in the industry has customer stories that other people just can't believe. So being able to work with demanding customers in high pressure situations means that you are resilient or means you're resilient if you're coming through that and not blowing up at people <laughs> or falling apart individually. Attention to detail, of course, getting every order right and treating every customer um, with the attention that they deserve or need requires attention to detail. Problem solving, you're in the industry. I don't need to tell you how many times a day you are problem solving. Active listening, critical to accuracy, critical to accuracy. Conflict resolution, and depending on which restaurant you're working in, you may have to deal with this more often than you might in other restaurants. So a lot of times they're, you're dealing with de-escalation, whether it's customers being irate with each other, being irate with you, being irate with the kitchen, whatever it happens to be, chances are you've had to deal with de-escalation. And sometimes it's not just with the customers, it's within the staff. A lot of times there's problems between one person on the staff and another um, or between yourself and somebody else. And being able to de-escalate that situation is a skill that translates into so many different industries. Sales and upselling. Depending again on the type of restaurant that you're working in, um, promoting certain selections on the menu or upselling drinks or special cocktails that they have or recommending drinks that pair well with other foods on with foods on a menu. Um, that's all part of upselling. And some restaurants keep track of what the individual 
is doing in terms of effectiveness when it comes to upselling. And upselling and sales can be a big part of a lot of different kinds of jobs. Even if it's customer service and you're answering the phones, let's say for a cruise line industry, there's always those opportunities to upsell to a different kind of cabin or more excursions, or if you're working with a cell phone company, would you like to upgrade or add another line? There are almost always opportunities for upselling in just about any kind of a position. So that's a wonderful skill to have. Social perceptiveness, in other words, picking up on the cues of other individuals and trying to figure out what their needs are based on those cues and making sure that you're approaching individuals in a way that seems to be right for that particular audience, really critical. Adaptability. Working as wait staff or a server, you are in a really dynamic environment and you have to be adaptability. Adaptability is the name of the game. The kitchen just ran out of the very thing that you've been told to promote and it happens to be the thing that everybody wants tonight. Um, or the technology goes down, or something is happening and you need to be able to change on a dime and still keep everybody happy. Collaboration, so working with your fellow servers as well as the kitchen staff and management. Crisis management, again, things come up all day, every day. Patience, I don't have it. I can fake it for a little while, um, but if you're working long shifts every day and you're managing to get through it without um, blowing up or resorting to fisticuffs, <laughs> then, then you've got more than most people do. And that is a huge asset. Initiative, taking positive steps, proactive steps to enhance a customer experience or to go the extra mile to make sure that they're not just happy they're elated. So this is the list that we've come up with for those transferable skills. And as I said, if you have more that you want to drop in below in the comment section, please do. The more the merrier. All right. And then what we want to do is we also want to come up with a list of accomplishments and qualifying statements. It's become increasingly important when you're creating a resume to make sure that your resume doesn't look like a list of things you did. It shouldn't look like a job description. It's okay to include a couple of descriptive items in there, but they want to know specifically, what did you do that set you apart? What is it that makes you unique? Not what did you do, but what did you accomplish? And we have spoken with so many people who say, yeah, but what did, how, how do I do that? What did I do that's extraordinary? And so we're giving some examples here in this post as well that I'm going to run through with you. And again, if you have others that you want to add, drop them into the comment section. Again, these are just examples. So these are highlighting your achievements and providing concrete metrics um, that human resources managers, talent acquisition folks, and applicant tracking software can focus in on. So just as some examples, achieved 25% increase in personal sales via effective promotion of specials and drink pairing recommendations. Huh. Okay. Named employee of the month for five months through votes cast by customers and coworkers maintained 95% or higher guest service rating for three years straight, learned details of 10 new products or specials nightly and provided customers with accurate details about each. You can start to see why these get to be important. That's so much more impressive than took orders, filled orders. Um, it's just your you're forgetting about some of these things that you do that transfer so well into other industries. So if you're learning about new products and specials and you're giving accurate information, you can picture yourself. And more importantly, the hiring manager can picture you in a role where you're answering phones, for example, customer service, and somebody's asking about products in the company's catalog. And understanding how to describe those in such a way that you're making a compelling 
sales argument for the person to consider purchasing that. You're able to give them enough accurate description that they don't feel like you're winging it. All right. Um, yeah, increased beverage sales 23% through recommendations of beers, wines, and cocktails to complement their other menu selections. Effective de-escalation de of problematic customers by using a calm demeanor, active listening, uh, setting limits, and when necessary, enforcement. Recognized for perfect attendance for three years. Exceeded sales targets by 11% by upselling appetizers and drinks and ensured customers had a positive experience and were made to feel valued through prompt, friendly, and accurate service. If you look at this list, it makes a much more compelling argument for you as a good fit for a position in a company outside of the food service industry or the hospitality industry, because these are things that you've accomplished. You are a go-getter. You took the industry that you were working in and made the most of it. So it stands to reason that you're going to take those same attitudes and aptitudes into this new role and do the same sort of thing for them, have these wonderful accomplishments and help them hit their goals as a company. So now we want to take those items and drop them into a cover letter um, that showcases your transferable skills. And this is assuming that you have the opportunity to, to provide a cover letter. And I always say, if, you, if a company gives you an opportunity to send a cover letter, do. It doesn't have to be complex. We've put together just a brief sample here. I was excited to find your job post for a customer care representative. I've carefully reviewed the job description and requirements, and I feel confident I'd be an ideal fit for this position. I have more than nine years of customer service experience. Notice I'm not saying I have more than nine years in waitstaff or hospitality experience. Your experience is customer service. Let's call it what it is. Okay, I have more than nine years of customer service experience and a successful track record of problem solving, communication, upselling, and doing whatever it takes to ensure an exceptional customer experience. My years as a server in the fast-paced restaurant industry have taught me the significance of clear communications and friendly service with a very diverse customer base. I'm a self-directed worker who functions well both autonomously or as part of a team. I have a highly focused and detail-oriented approach to my work that will serve me well in this remote position. It's with great enthusiasm, blah, blah, blah. One of the things that you'll notice is this cover letter includes a lot of the keywords that you're likely to find, in this case, in the job description for a customer service role. So we're talking about customer service, problem solving, communication, upselling, fast paced, uh, friendly, highly focused, able to work autonomously, enthusiasm. So all of those things are in this simple few paragraphs. And as your resume and cover letter go through the applicant tracking software, which we'll talk about in just a moment, all of those keywords are going to be picked up by the bots and those are going to be feathers in your cap. It's going to help your rank go up so that your resume, your application is more likely to end up in the hands of a decision maker. So then we move on to your resume, your remote resume. This is where we take everything that you did, all of those things that we talked about above, those accomplishments, and we weave them into an applicant tracking software friendly, an ATS friendly or bot friendly resume. And I've included links here in this post to module eight. Module eight in our free online course about how to find and land legitimate remote jobs is a comprehensive module about understanding how applicant tracking software works, why it's important to have an ATS friendly resume, and how to build one of those. And we do include, include um, resume templates in that module as well. And again, it's all free. You just have to follow that link. So what we've done here is for that same person that we wrote the cover letter for, we put together a 
resume for somebody who has worked expressly as a server in the hospitality industry who is applying for a customer service role. So we start off with her professional summary, customer service professional, because that's what this applicant is. They are a customer service professional. Doesn't matter which industry they were providing customer service in. They are a customer service professional. So they start off with that first, um, that first blurb that sort of puts them into a nutshell for the person who's going to be looking at their resume and for the bots. Customer centric, customer experience professional with nine plus year history of exceeding established goals and customer expectations. Experienced in upselling and general customer care. Recognized for excellence in attendance and punctuality, meeting and exceeding sales goals, teamwork and enthusiastic participation in continuous learning opportunities. Now this next section, skills and expertise, is really important. Now, we just put together that list of transferable skills up above, and they're not all included here. When you're applying for a job, I want you to go through the job description, extract some of the skills that they have listed in there as keywords, and make sure that those keywords, if they apply to you, are in this section. So I've just plugged some of them in here as a sample. So you can see them, service-minded, time management, Microsoft Office, which if you know Microsoft Office, if you have technical skills, make sure that you include those as well. Even if you weren't using them in your previous positions, if you have the skills, make sure you include them here because that technology skill is going to be important in a lot of different fields. All right, so basically we're putting all of those in here. And then when it comes to the professional experience in the next section, this is where those accomplishments and quantifiable statements get to be so important. So we start off with your title at your current or previous position, the company name, and the time that you worked there. And then we do a one-line overview. This is where you should be putting in what your job description was as opposed to your, um, your accomplishments. Historically, people have written resumes that will say things like, waited on 25 tables a day, um, handled incoming payment for customer tabs. Um, you know, just, it, it's, it just, it serves like a task list as opposed to a list of accomplishments. So in this case, we're saying created memorable experiences through excellent customer service, attention to detail and focus on relationship building. Period. That is what you did. That was your to-do list. That's what you were doing every day. Then we start to get into the accomplishments. These are where the bullets fall in, assuming that you have them. Recognized as a top performing waiter, closing the most sales in a, uh, in a 15 person team, achieved 25% uh, increase in personal sales by a promotion, blah, blah, blah. These I just pulled directly down from above. So you're familiar with these already. Um, and then on to the next job, server and cashier. Then of course the usual information, the company name and where it was and the time that you worked there. And then provided exceptional customer service to over 120 customers daily in a tourist focused establishment. Because in the mind of the reader, if, if this is what you're doing, it is a fast paced environment where the clientele are changing every day. You're not, you don't have Joe sitting in booth three every day. These are different people who are coming through. All right. So learned details, blah, blah, blah. And again, these are points that we made all up in the, um, the section up above. And then you just go into your education, any other, any other information that you want to, um, to include as you go forward. So just the usual sections after that. But the main points here are focus on the transferable skills. What are you bringing to the table? Not Everybody has the ability to look at somebody when they say, um, oh yeah, I've been a server in the food service industry for the past nine years. In their mind, they're picturing the people who bring them food to their table. They take my order, they bring me my food. They don't know what's involved in making that happen. You do. 
and you need to make them see that. Make them see what you really do. Okay, make them see what you've really accomplished. Show them. It's incumbent upon you to show them what you're bringing to the table. Never assume that other people know how difficult any job is. When they're on the receiving end of your service, nobody really fully understands what's going on behind the scenes unless they themselves have performed in similar jobs in the past. All right. I hope that's helpful. Um, again, I'm going to include a link to this post. Um, you're going to find it on the Rat Race Rebellion website so that you can pop over there and take your time going through those resources. Um, you can, you can, of course, rewatch this video as often as you want, but it's nice to know that it's in writing on the site as well. If for any reason you can't find the link in the description below, just pop over to the ratracerebellion.com website. You'll find it on the homepage. You may just have to scroll through. Um, but it's that simple. Again, if you have any questions or comments or additions to the lists that we've put together here, drop them into the comment section below. We always appreciate your input and we try to respond to you as quickly as possible. But I love that when you make comments, they're contributions for other people to read as well. I don't know about you. When I watch YouTube videos, I always go to the comments. I like I I'm one of those people who just needs my popcorn. I'm scrolling down and reading the comments. Um, and I believe a lot of people do that as well. So by adding your input to these lists, it helps other people as well. Um, so I think that's just a wonderful thing to do. If you're serious about finding remote work, of course, we encourage you to visit the ratracerebellion.com site every day where we post legitimate work from home jobs Monday through Friday every week. While you're there, look in the upper right-hand corner of any page and you'll find a link to subscribe to our free email newsletter as well. And that will definitely help you stay in the loop. That's it. Everybody have an amazing day and keep an eye out for other videos that we're doing about transferable skills from other industries um, that people have a hard time understanding what exactly goes on behind the scenes. Have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.